What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Harry the Horse Barbecue. And today, we're gonna show you how to take your pit from this to this. That's right, we are cleaning, greasing, and firing up the fat stack FS120. If you wanna figure out how to clean and season your new pit, or any pit for that matter, stick around. Let's get it. This thing is nice. Hurry the horse barbecue. All right, y'all, in my last video where I showcased the Fat Stack FS120 Mark II, a lot of y'all have said, that pit's rusty. What are you gonna do with the rust? When are you gonna season it? Well, today is that day. We are gonna season this bad boy, kick this rust. The first fire up is here, y'all. I am so excited to see how this pit performs, and I just can't wait to cook on it. Now, I also got a lot of comments that are asking me to tell the story about this pit. So I'll give it to you guys as quick and brief as possible. About three and a half years ago, I was inquiring with fat stack smokers about pits that they're building. They informed me that they were coming out with this backyard line of smokers and I jumped in on the ground floor. I know that if you jumped in early, you got an extreme discount on these pits. With a $500 deposit, I was able to secure my place in line. Overall, the base model of this pit cost me about $4,000. Over time, Fat Stack started to add some upgrades like the foldable stack, and I also paid for an additional upgrade of an antique patina finish, which was a cost of about $300 or so. And I have a picture right here of what the pit was actually supposed to look like. You could also pay for an upgrade of a Rover model now, or you can even put your Fat Stack 120 gallon pit on a trailer with a wood rack. Now, when it was coming up on the delivery of this pit, I was super stoked. And it just so happens that there was another customer of Fat Stacks about an hour away who ordered the same pit. Him and I coordinated and he did a huge solid by coordinating shipping and actually taking these smokers off the truck with a forklift. However, I wasn't there for the initial delivery of the pits and the guy I coordinated with actually ended up taking my pit and leaving me his. After some communication and some swapping of smokestacks, he ended up with the antique patina finish pit. I ended up with the raw metal finish pit, which is why I'm doing the seasoning process today. This is the hand we were dealt, and we're gonna put our own little Harry the Horse barbecue touch on the outside of this pit, so we know that it is our pit. Now, I also gotta give a shout out to one of my subscribers, Hojo Barbecue, AKA my guy, Ted, he hit me up and said, man, my pit was rusted from top to bottom when I bought it, and these are the steps I did to clean it up, make it shine, and man, Ted, that pit is beautiful. So my guy Ted told me, hey, hit those rust spots with some distilled white vinegar, check, then clean up the metal with some odorless mineral spirits, check. I'm trying to just be super natural here and go kind of old school, but I wanna season the inside and the outside of this pit with nothing but sprayable Wagyu beef tallow. Months ago, I bought the Wagyu beef tallow spray knowing that I was gonna do this video and spray this baby down to season it with the finest Wagyu beef tallow out there. So enough horsing around, let's spray down this rust spots with some vinegar to start. Let's do it. All right, y'all, I've never had to kind of knock rust off a smoker before. I'm gonna spritz around, see what happens. Fighting the wind here, guys. Don't let the wind knock the vinegar in your eye. That will burn. There it is, there it is, right, right in the eye, right in the eye. Oof, right in the eye again. Okay, I went through about half a spray bottle of vinegar, just hit it all over and then just try to scrub some of the rust away. The vinegar spray worked for some high rust areas like around welds and stuff like that, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much around the whole cooker because the Wagyu beef tallow should be able to take care of that rust once we fire this bad boy up. Moving on to the odorless mineral spirits. This is basically just to kind of clean up the metal a little bit before we add the Wagyu beef tallow. We'll do a light application, clean up this metal. How do I open you? You gotta pry it off, what any tools for this? Ted, let me know if I'm doing this right, but I'm just gonna pour a little on the sponge, mix it around. Oh, get it all up in there. 
This bad man pajama is gonna be shining when we're done. Ooh, hello. So I'm gonna be actually pretty diligent with this and I'm gonna coat every bit of the smoker, but I'll bring you guys back once she's fully coated. Then we're gonna spray down with Wagyu beef tallow. All right, y'all, you can see after I hit it with the mineral spirits that it's looking a bit streaky, but it definitely looks a lot more cleaned up overall, especially on this firebox. There were rust spots all over here. This whole bead was covered in rust. It was orange. That's looking good. See the firebox, a little streaky, but definitely cleaned up. Same thing here, not, I mean, still some rust on it, but way better than what it was. All right, y'all, I can even feel on my hands after using those mineral spirits that it kind of like rips the oil out of things. It's definitely kind of a degreaser and it just kind of stripped anything that was sitting on the outside of this metal off. So now we've got a clean surface to work with. I've been letting this dry for maybe about 15 minutes or so. Once I don't see any wet spots, that's when we're gonna apply the beef tallow. Hey, up and under, okay. The secret weapon, y'all. Let's see how she does. Oh yeah. The inside looks good. Smelling like beef tallow, that's for sure. I'm gonna use a different sponge to kind of rub in the oil on the outside, so that way I mainly just don't drip all over my driveway. Hi, Azzy. Lost up, bossed up. Squeaky clean. She's pretty much a greasy pig at this point. One more place is the inside of the firebox. Just ran out of the last of the beef tallow. Two cans, good enough for me. Grease her up. An underrated spot is the under part of your firebox. Okay, we'll call that the end. Let's wash up and then light this fire. The first burn in. Savor it, take it in, enjoy it, bond with your pit. That's enough of that. Couple of snake nests. Let's let her do its thing. I'm gonna open the damper because I didn't do that. All that hard work deserves a nice Canadian Pilsner. Oh yeah. Those splits that I threw in the firebox got us cruising at 300 degrees right off rip. We're gonna bump this fire to maybe about 350 as we keep feeding wood and we're gonna let this rock for a few hours to set that coating. But let me know in the comments below right now if you notice a difference from the beginning to now. And let me know your thoughts. Did I do this justice? Was the beef tallow worth it? Let me know. Also, it's smelling like I'm cooking like a steak or some burgers out here because of all that beef tallow. Highly recommend. We've almost got a coal bed. Just using some junky pieces of wood. We're just gonna see how much she can handle. She's looking mighty fine. Couple hours in on this burn-in and you could see how glossy and beautiful that lid is. We've got that nice patina on the racks. 
looking really good. All that sizzling you're hearing is a combination of the fat frying and there's a little bit of water down there. This pit is beautiful now that it's finally seasoned up. Now each step of this process is totally optional. You don't have to vinegar spritz, you don't have to use the mineral spirits. To season your smoker, you could just lay on a coat of your favorite oil, coat it all the way around, make sure to work that oil in, run a pretty hot fire, and you can season your pit just like that. The cheapest and easiest option of seasoning your smoker is to go with a can of Pam, as we've all seen, spray it down inside and out, light a hot fire, you're good to go. But if you've got a little side cash and you wanna go the Wagyu beef tallow route, you might as well go for it. Beef fat is the OG of seasoning pits because a lot of restaurants make their own tallow and have a lot of it lying around. So they can use it to fix squeaky hinges, season pits, use them in deep fryers, use tallow when wrapping briskets. The possibilities are endless with beef tallow. We've been running this fire for about two hours or so. Right now, cruising around 375. Lights, a beautiful night, things are looking right. Yo, this pit is tight. That was just straight off the dome. Run at some high temps for a good, I'd say three to five hours to really set in that oil of your choosing and your pit is gonna last. And this is some routine maintenance. You wanna do this every couple months or so. If you see some rust, spray some oil, light a fire, and your pit will last you a lifetime. Thank you all for tuning in to Harry the Horse Barbecue. I really appreciate you checking out this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel below. I know you wanna do it, and I put my blood, sweat, and tears into seasoning this pit and creating a beautiful patina on the outside. Plus it really helps me out, so hit that subscribe button below. You know we use that beef tallow to crisp up the outside of this smoker. She's looking crisp, so you gotta leave a like on this video. Leave a comment down below of your thoughts about how I cleaned up and seasoned this pit, and let me know what you think it's looking like. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we're posting new content, and you can follow me on Instagram at Harry the Horse Barbecue. Tag me so I can see what y'all are cooking because it really inspires me to get out here and cook. Show me your pits while you're at it. And with that being said, there's only one more thing, y'all. You heard this one straight from the horse's mouth. We'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Mm. She a beaut.